one of the most widespread beliefs found in nearly all religions and spiritual systems is that we live in a wonderful world designed by a benevolent designer created by a holy loving and perfect monotheistic creator the universe is seen as a university a material dimension where we can manifest our desires learn lessons gather information and experience grow and evolve into something better and later go somewhere better by developing our karma living in accordance with certain commandments or by having enough faith we are promised immortality in a heavenly afterlife realm with other perfected spiritual beings generally accompanying these claims is the further belief that those who don't manifest their desires refuse to learn lessons fail to develop their karma live out of accordance with commandments or don't have enough faith are condemned to nearly endless reincarnations or worse yet to spend eternity in hell hinduism jainism buddhism and other eastern religions teach that we reincarnate here potentially hundreds or thousands of times to learn lessons and refine our karma until we are finally allowed to graduate to a higher heavenly dimension judaism christianity islam and other western religions teach that we incarnate here only once but by having faith and or living in accordance with certain commandments we are also allowed to graduate to a higher heavenly abode even the new age movement and most other esoteric spiritual systems share this fundamental foundational belief that our material realm is a generally positive place made for learning and experience almost no formal religion or metaphysics barring the ancient cathars and gnostics have even breached the possibility that this reality could be a purposely negative place created by a malevolent entity if god is defined as omniscient omnipotent omnipresent and a perfect being wholly loving and benevolent why are its creations so pitifully imperfect why would a sane god create psychopaths sociopaths predators homicidal maniacs serial rapists and other insanity why is everything subject to entropy aging sickness suffering and death why would god create parasites like hookworms ringworms tapeworms and lice why the need for skin-eating fungi organ-destroying cancers disease-breeding bacteria and so many other chronic and degenerative illnesses diseases toxins and poisons why did god create such a huge variety of terrifying and torturous natural disasters from tsunamis tornadoes hurricanes earthquakes hailstorms and volcanic eruptions to droughts famines plagues and pestilence why does everything exist in a predatory hierarchical food chain where life feeds upon life and must constantly kill to survive why do we have no memory of anything before our births into this realm and why are we never given a clear and unarguable history explanation instructions or purpose for our existence here why would a perfect loving and benevolent god create such a horrific malevolent and confusing reality as this most people are quick to answer that the reason for this is because we must have pain to appreciate pleasure we must have hate to differentiate from love and we must have yin to understand yang the world is full of dichotomies and polar opposites so that we are able to experience the full depth and breadth of possibilities while i agree that some level of negativity is necessary to differentiate appreciate and balance with positivity i would argue that this reality is unfairly skewed towards the negative for example consider the most pleasurable worldly experience you can imagine whether that be the most delicious delectable feast an exciting fun-filled adventure or a tantalizing lustful fantasy consider being granted one full hour of this most pleasurable experience imaginable but with one very important caveat after an hour of the world's most pleasurable experience you must then endure one full hour of the world's most painful tortures 
That means bone breaking, boiling or burning alive, branding, castrating, cutting, flaying, and flagellation. That means medieval instruments like iron maidens, racks, whips, flails, brazen bulls, and choke pairs. Would you volunteer to endure one hour of such horrific torture if it meant one hour of the world's best pleasures? I have yet to meet anyone who could say with a straight face that they would honestly volunteer for such an offer. If they were awarded an hour of the most enjoyable worldly happiness, but afterwards had to endure even five minutes of excruciating suffering like being skinned alive or violently disemboweled, I know of no one who would take such a rotten deal. This is because the gap between the levels of pain and pleasure possible here on earth is more like a chasm. The most enjoyable pleasures imaginable pale, wither, and disappear into irrelevance when pitted against the disgusting and horrific pains possible here. Consider the pleasure a predator derives from eating its meal versus the pain of the prey being eaten. The overwhelmingly negative experience of the prey far outweighs the level of pleasure experienced by the predator. The lucky lion experiences ten minutes of mild gustatory satisfaction, while the unlucky deer experiences the extreme torture of being eaten alive, having its skin and muscles torn open, bones broken and mangled, limbs ripped apart, and life ended prematurely, all for a sick game of survival of the fittest instituted by a supposedly loving and benevolent creator. Humans have a high capacity for self-delusion, especially when it comes to feel-good answers to uncomfortable questions. We also tend to remember things, people, and events more positively than they actually were. This psychological tendency, known as rosy retrospection, is a cognitive bias found in most people, causing them to remember the past more positively than it was in reality. Is it possible that most people are also suffering from a similar cognitive bias, causing them to downplay the abundant negativity present in this world? Could this metaphysical rosy retrospection make people blind to the unnecessary evils and inexplicable suffering here? Howdy Mikowski wrote, Another thing that should become obvious, if you look at this reality honestly, is how easily we all get fooled. Once you realize that all the major organizations, either government, media, or advertising, are run by people trained in how to fool and manipulate, it makes sense what our realm has become. Following the hermetic principle of as above, so below, is it any surprise that the after-death astral realm would be one of pure deception? Arthur Schopenhauer wrote, In any case, even though things have gone with you tolerably well, the longer you live, the more clearly you will feel that on the whole, life is a disappointment, nay, a cheat. If two men who are friends in their youth meet again when they are old, after being separated for a lifetime, the chief feeling they will have at the sight of each other will be one of complete disappointment at life as a whole, because their thoughts will be carried back to that earlier time when life seemed so fair as it lay spread out before them in the rosy light of dawn, promised so much, and then performed so little. This feeling will so completely predominate over every other that they will not even consider it necessary to give it words, but on either side it will be silently assumed, and form the groundwork of all they have to talk about. He who lives to see two or three generations is like a man who sits some time in the conjurer's booth at a fair, and witnesses the performance twice or thrice in succession. The tricks were meant to be seen only once, and when they are no longer a novelty, and cease to deceive, their effect is gone. To discern whether earth more resembles a school or a prison, first consider the key differences between the two institutions. Schools are places of higher education and development, whereas prisons are lowly places of survival and atonement. In schools, students either pass their tests and graduate, or else fail and continue trying, whereas in prisons, inmates simply must do their time regardless. The most important difference, however, is that schools have the option of not attending, 
or dropping out, whereas prisons do not. If we cannot simply drop out of this school of life and go home, then that proves this is not a school, but a prison. If the only exit is locked behind hundreds or thousands of reincarnations, slowly refining our karma until we manage one perfect lifetime in this wildly imperfect world, how fair of a curriculum is that? Furthermore, if the universe is meant to be a university, and we are all simply here to learn, grow, and develop spiritually through multiple lives, why are we born a blank slate, with our memories completely erased every incarnation? What kind of education are we supposed to receive if our memories aren't retained through each lifetime? Forcing humans to reincarnate without their past life memories and expecting improvement is like sending a senior in college back to kindergarten with a lobotomy in hopes they will graduate next time. If Earth is truly a school with the purpose of teaching lessons and helping us grow, wiping each student's memory every time we enter a new grade is completely antithetical and mutually incompatible with this goal. Besides, there are far kinder and more effective ways of teaching than the numerous types of negative reinforcement and retributive punishment present on prison school earth. If we were created by a sane, wholesome, perfect, all-loving, and all-powerful God, why would such a God create fallen, sinful, imperfect, and ignorant beings in the first place? Why would God then place these beings into a giant disciplinarium full of various forms of physical suffering, mental anguish, and emotional torment, just to teach them lessons? If and when these students fail their final tests, God then hits them upside the head so hard it knocks out the entire memory of everything they learned in class, and forces them to start school all over again. Surely an all-loving, all-knowing, all-powerful God could find a better way than this. Howdy Mikowski wrote, It did not take long to realize that this is not a school, or you would remember your previous incarnations and lessons learned. One key facet that most near-death experiences reveal is that the return to earth and a human body includes the above-mentioned memory wipe, where everything from that previous life is forgotten. This alone clearly indicates that this is not a place of learning and growth. If you touch stinging nettle without gloves, your hand gets stung and it hurts. You remember that. And from then on, if you want to pick some nettle, you wear gloves. That is learning. Remembering is a key step in the process. But if on each incarnation you have to go back to touching the nettle to find out its stings, that is not learning or growth, but insanity. That is our reality. If we really could remember how much suffering we had gone through lifetime after lifetime, we would have long ago shut down our reincarnations. The trap can only work with the memory wipe. Besides, if someone has had a thousand lifetimes, surely that person must have learned everything by now. Given that most of those lives would have been fraught with intense suffering, does someone really need 997 lives out of a thousand full of pain to learn? I don't know about you, but I learned better in school from teachers who were kind, took time with me, and encouraged me to be creative, not by someone who whacked me over the head with a stick constantly.